Hey, hey, everybody. Hope you're doing well today. This is Brad Cartwright with Econ Course Companion, and today we're going to take a look at the short-run view of allocative efficiency in perfect competition to try to gain an understanding of what it means. All right, let's check it out. All right, well, check out this diagram that brought to us by Jocelyn Blink who, of course, is the author of the world-renowned Econ Course Companion book that she puts together along with Ian Dorton. And let's take a look at this right here. Allocative efficiency, what is it? Well, it occurs when suppliers are producing the optimal mix of goods and services required by consumers. What does that mean? Where suppliers are producing exactly what the consumers want. Okay, and actually here, we're going to take a look at both the perfect competition price takers market and the price makers market, which of course is monopoly, oligopoly, and monopolistic competition. All right, let's, first, let's take a look over here. Yeah, what's this? This is a diagram of um, allocative efficiency in... Perfect competition. Okay, so what is it? Well, it's this graph we normally see here. And if you don't understand how to construct this graph, go back a bunch of videos and figure out where these, how you derive this um, curve. But you, as you know, in perfect competition, um, firms are price takers, which means they have a perfectly elastic demand curve. And demand in perfect competition also equals average, average revenue and marginal revenue. And then, of course, we're going to come back and we're going to draw a marginal cost curve. Boom. And we will arrive at a point right here where marginal costs equals marginal revenue. Now, you might recognize this point. This is also the point of profit maximization. But if we want to find the allocatively efficient point, guess what? It's the same point. Because here we're going to find where, for allocative efficiency, we're going to find where marginal cost equals average revenue. And in the perfect competition market structure, those are going to be the same line, meaning average revenue, margin revenue are going to be the same line. So this point right here is also gives us the quantity where MC equals MR, the quantity where this firm could maximize its profit based on the level of output it's producing right there. And it's also the point where MC equals AR, which is going to be where we find the perfect output of goods and services required by consumers because this is where we find marginal costs also equaling average revenue, but it's also crossing the demand curve. And maybe that might be a little bit easier way for you to think about it as we move over to the other market structures, which of course have different revenue curves. Yeah, so this is the revenue curves for uh, price makers, which is monopoly, monopolistic competition, and oligopoly. And in this curve, or over here, what do we have? Well, we have a downward sloping demand and average revenue curve. And then we have a more steeply downward sloping marginal revenue curve. It's diminishing at twice the rate as the demand and average revenue curve. And then we come back and draw our marginal revenue curve there. And of course, if we were profit maximizing, the point we would want is right here, where marginal cost equals marginal revenue. This is the price maximizing, the profit maximizing point uh, quantity of output for a firm. And we would draw a revenue curve there. But that's not, what, that's not necessarily what the consumers would want the suppliers to produce. No, where they want the suppliers to produce is where marginal cost equals average revenue. Okay, so this Q1 here, this right there would, is the allocatively efficient point for price makers who are monopolies, monopolist competitioners, <laughs> and oligopolists. Okay, and in that market structure where MC equals AR is a very different point than in the um, perfect competition market, right? But nonetheless, guess what? we would find allocative efficiency here. But guess what? Firms are not in the business of being allocatively efficient. They are in the business of what? Maximizing revenue. And so the place where they would operate isn't what's best for consumers, 
but rather what's best for them. And if they don't do that, then guess what? They're not doing their job because people that are in business are made are in business. And the assumption in this um, IB economics course is that they want to profit maximize. And this is going to be the level of output where they would want to work because it is at that point that the firm has the best chance of maximizing its profits. Okay? So right here, yeah, where MC equals MR, this is the profit maximizing point, right? But this is where if they were allocating their goods um, efficiently for society as a whole and look thing about customers, this is where they would produce, okay? So allocated efficient point, and this right here is the productively efficient point where MC equals MR. All right, so we got two different things going on, one in the price maker's market and one over here in the price taker's market, and that's what's super cool about theory of the firm because no matter what, the firms are just the firms, and they're going to behave differently in the different marketplaces. And all that because, as you know well, as I've said all throughout this series, that firms are um, set in motion to behave in a certain way based on the structure of the market they're trying to compete in. And the cost curves for a firm are always the same, whether they're in any of the four market structures. But if they're in perfect competition, their demand curve, average revenue, and marginal revenue curve is going to look very different than if they're in the monopoly, monopolistic competition and um, oligopoly market structures. And that's why they would behave differently. And that's all because, as you know well by now, I hope that economics is human behavior, my friends. All the data and all these graphs and all the information comes from the behavior and not the other way around. Always remember that. Always remember that. Always remember that. Economics is human behavior trapped on graphs and diagrams. All right, my friends, be kind to one another out there. Be good to yourself, too. I hope you found this video to be helpful, and we'll talk to you in a bit.